I'm not interested in anything living until it's fossilized. I, I can't explain it. I've always liked rocks ever since I was a kid. I've always collected rocks. And I've always found them very interesting and beautiful. I guess I like geology because I've always found history very interesting. And geology is the ultimate history. I feel like it really gets back to the formation of our Earth, and you can even extend it into the formation of the solar system. It's something that really extends back in time, and I find that fascinating. I've become very interested in something called an ophiolite, which is a piece of ocean crust that's been thrust up onto land. Basically, it's, it's a place where you can go on land and you can walk on the seafloor. And in particular, my research focuses on the Samal Ophiolite, which is located in Oman. I believe that it's actually the largest Ophiolite in the world. It extends for greater than 350 kilometers length, and it, it's up to five kilometers thick, and it also happens to be a desert. So there's almost no vegetation. For geologists, having a desert environment is ideal because you see all of the rocks. I've always wanted a way to combine my interest in geology with my environmental concern for the growing concentration of carbon dioxide that humans have been emitting to the atmosphere. No matter how much we reduce emissions, it's not going to be enough. We also need to look for ways to remove carbon dioxide, or CO2, from the atmosphere and put it into a different reservoir. And one of the proposed methods for that is to actually find suitable rocks that naturally like to combine with CO2 to form solid minerals. And at first you might think, OK, ophiolites in the desert, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, how do those two connect? At an ophiolite, this rock wants to form these minerals because that rock, which remember, it came from the ocean, it has been brought up to the surface, exposed to the air, and new temperature and pressure conditions. And it's not happy. It doesn't like those conditions because they aren't the same conditions in which it was formed. And so this rock, it wants, it wants to alter. What I'm particularly interested in studying is figuring out how quickly that alteration occurs naturally. And what are the different factors that influence how quickly those minerals form? And if we can understand the natural system, that'll give us a better toolbox for trying to understand how we might be able to, to speed up this alteration, how we might be able to go in there and artificially change the system so that this happens quicker and is able to offset anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions. The recipe that you need to form these minerals in an ophiolite is you need water and you need CO2. And you need that water to first go into the rock and dissolve the rock and pick up certain elements. And then when that water returns back to the surface, where it's able to interact with carbon dioxide or CO2, certain elements will combine with that CO2, forming a group of minerals called carbonates, which then removes that CO2 from the atmosphere and stores it in solid rock. Some places in the ophiolite, you get huge deposits of these carbonate minerals. Often, they have these beautiful turquoise blue pools that are associated with them. And the carbonates are actually precipitating from these turquoise blue pools. And it's just stunning to find these in the middle of the desert. In January, I went to Oman for one month for field work. And I loved every single day. I lived in the Middle East when I was in high school. For six months, I lived in Jordan. And I've had an interest in that part of the world. I've studied Arabic for several years. The fact that Evelyn double majored in Arabic and geology makes her just the best person to be in the field with in Oman. You could say, for instance, Aina Sukhur, Mithilhada, like where are rocks like these? You could say, Aina Ma, Mithilhada, like where is water like this? Well, there was one day when we were heading into uh, a specific canyon and we encountered a man who clearly was a little bit unhappy about the fact that we were going in there. And uh, he was kind of blocking the way. And I think under ordinary circumstances, we probably would have turned around and gone somewhere else. You, you, they actually say, they're like, what are you doing here? This is our land or something. So I just sort of had a standard response. And Evelyn talked to him. And indeed, he indicated that, well, my wife and children are down there. And he's concerned about having strangers around his family. And um, so then she explained to him what we were doing. <laughs> We're from America. That we really weren't going to go right down into the bottom of this canyon where his family was. Nedrus el geologia hona, like we study geology here. <laughs> he uh, 
became very happy and friendly and, and uh, not only uh, permitted us to go on down where we were going, but uh, provided advice on the best way to get there. So that entire interaction would have been impossible without having Evelyn in the field. I don't know. It's amazing how much you can do with some, even simple Arabic. So. so this is the room where I do all sorts of things with my rocks. I cut them. I crush them. The central component to Evie's thesis will be the carbon cycle. I mean, the carbon cycle is, is you know, an essential part of life in a sense. And, of course, it has an influence on the climate. So now I'm going to cut a thin piece off of this one particular sample, which is from a place called Wadi Sudari in northern Oman. It's, it's, a, it's a good fit because she's excited about this work. And she you know, sort of knows the direction she wants to go. And um, that's one thing with Evie that you know is she's going to do it right. She's going to be careful. My sense of wonder in the natural world is fulfilled by by studying geology and by thinking about things on these grand time scales. And sure, it makes me insignificant, but I just find it so fascinating that, that I am so insignificant. I find that in studying the world and its complexities, really, I often find myself amazed at how beautiful a lot of these natural processes are. <laughs>